Greenville True Value is a third generation family business that's been a part of the fabric of the village community in Springville for decades. It's seen the ups and downs of not only the village, but like any long term Western New York business, the region as a whole. Springville is a town that's truly coming into its own with a resurgence of new young entrepreneurs taking the helm and guiding the town into a very bright future. And my guest today, Luke, is doing just that with Springville True Value. If you haven't been to the town in a while, I can only urge you to get down there the next time you're feeling the urge for a nice weekend drive. Luke, along with his parents and grandparents, have owned the store since 1986 and are truly doing a wonderful job, and now even have a fourth generation coming into the fold. My dad and my grandfather bought the business together, um, along with my my mom and my grandma. Okay. Um, they bought it in 1986, okay. I'm gonna say. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's we've had it for 36 years. Wow. Um, so you grew up in it, really. I mean, you were like, I, I grew did, up, yeah. yeah, I grew up in a restaurant. I was in the back in the playpen. So you were pretty much the same thing, right? Yep. Yeah. I had a little playroom set up in the office for <laughs> me and my sister. <laughs> we had the same thing. Man. My sister's two years, my junior. So yeah. <laughs> it's the same deal. And you know, what's funny. I always say like, uh, you know, cause you, so you grew up in the business, your parents bought the business, correct? With your grandparents, you said. So, yep. but you have, um, you're like hardwired for it in a different way. Do you see that or no? Yeah. You know, like you almost have like an intuitive sense with it. That's at least the way I, like I, I've seen with second and third generation uh, family businesses that the first generation that bought the business and got it going and got it on its feet and got the foundation set. The second and third generation, if they stay with the business, they just have like a total like psychic ability to read the business in a way the parents just couldn't. You right. know, so I think that's pretty cool. So does your, is your sister, she's younger than you, I take it? Yeah, three years. Does she work there or no? No, uh, she actually, her and her husband and kids actually live over in uh, Kenya. Oh my God, They're really? What do they do there? Missionaries. Oh wow, that's amazing. They, yeah, they work at a Bible school, like a Bible college for missionary children. Holy cow. Have you ever been so, over to visit? Or? I have not. My parents have been a couple of times. They're going again this summer. Wow, that's cool. Holy cow. So, wow. <laughs> Would have guessed, <laughs> right? That's about as far away as you could get. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. They're doing good work then. Good for them. So, uh, so, so your parents bought it in 1986 with your grandparents, so it was all four of them? Yep. And then you came along right around then, probably right 90-ish? Yeah, 87. 87. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so they so they got the business, and then you popped around. <laughs> so, uh, And then over the years, you just started work. I'm sure, because I did the same thing. Like, I started working there as soon as I could walk, really. I was, like, cleaning the dumpsters, <laughs> cleaning the floors. You know, did you do the same thing? Yeah, I did um, little, you know, littler things, but helping out where I could. Sure, sure. Well, I think that's how it gets into your brain. You know what I mean? You just kind of, yeah. through osmosis, everything just kind of becomes part of you in a way. Um, so now, was your dad and your grandpa, were they in like a construction, remodeling, home improvement type of business? or? Yeah, my grandfather worked for Eastern Summit, which was uh, like an uh, excavating construction business here in town for oh, cool. quite a few years. Right. Um, and my dad worked on a drill rig for several years. Oh, no kidding. That's an interesting um, job. So they both had the background. Um, and then my mom brought the business side of it. Right. So. That's funny. My, um, I, a lot of, that's my dad was the same way. My mom was a, the business head. My dad was kind of the face of the business and knew the yep. business in a way. But my mom really knew the business. You know what I mean? She was the brains behind the outfit. <laughs> that's what we say. Um, so they, but that store didn't, uh, that store had already been around, correct? It had, yeah. So it's um, been around for a long time, right? Yeah, it was, it was called Smith Hardware before they took it over. Okay. Well, that's um, and now. Did you guys turn it into a true? Did when did the true value like come along with you guys? Or I believe it was a Service Star when my parents purchased it, um, and Service Star got bought out by True Value. I see. Um, in the nineties, 
and it was true serve for a while they kind of combined the companies and then they dropped the serve and it just became true value i see i didn't even know that actually that's interesting so and i mean they're a really good company right because they're one of the few national uh, corporations that allow this type of private uh, um, you're not really even a franchise i don't know how the system works but it's you guys can pretty much run that autonomously correct Yep, all the all the true values are independently owned. Yeah, I, I um, love that too. And they on the commercials, they're always kind of touting that. But I think it's a really important thing that the public needs to understand. You know what I mean? This isn't just a chain. You know, these are right. family owned and operated. And uh, I thought that was a really smart move. I don't. They did they do that from the get go? Pretty much, like they said. Okay, as, well. Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah, so we're gonna come in. We're gonna take over your shop, or here's the deal. But uh, you guys can still run it, and we're gonna offer you know this brand awareness or, or, or and marketing acumen because uh, that's yeah. And honestly, for small businesses, I kind of wish more larger businesses would allow that because the one thing that's so difficult for a small business is advertising and marketing. Right. You know, I mean, on top of the fact that it costs an arm and a leg, uh, a lot of times even if you go into it, you don't get your you know the customer acquisition is just a hard thing nowadays and that cut through all that noise. And if you have a company like that that's doing national, regional ad campaigns, you know, that really helps out. So It does, yeah. yeah. So now for products, do they – so when I see the commercials or I get the flyers, those are allocated – like those, obviously, you would have to carry those products. Is that like a mandatory thing or – no, so all of their advertising is kind of on a buy-in basis, and you can pick and choose what you want to do. Okay. Um, so that's that's an area where we sometimes run into issues if one store sure. in the area is doing sale, but we're not, or vice versa. Right. Yeah, but that's really cool, though. So at least you guys have the option, because I know some. Um, well, I guess that would be a more franchise deal, but on some franchise deals, you don't have a choice. A part of your profits go over to your advertising budget, you know, right. and you don't really have any say in it. So that's really cool that you can opt out of, you know, whatever you don't want to carry or whatever you think is not really going to fit in uh, for, you know, for the, the quarter or whatnot. So um, now the pro you guys, are, so your dad and your grandfather were in it and you have probably other employees that were in the business as well, correct? Like in the construction business, the hardware, you know. Um, our for a time um our we've over the years people that have, have been experts or had yeah. expertise in different things but yeah. a lot of them are just willing to to learn and sure sure well i mean that's on it all so that's what it's all about too and i'm sure by at this point you probably got a super well-rounded knowledge of everything right <laughs> oh, well yeah <laughs> I like to think so. Yeah, but. you probably do. You do? Are you? Uh, you do a lot of work at home, or no? Yeah, some. Because um, it's it's always yeah. the, the carpenter's dilemma. You know what I mean? He's like, uh, there's always like a project going on at the carpenter's house on the block. It's right. always half done because he's busting his butt all day on the site. He comes yep. home and he's like, oh, oh god. So, <laughs> uh, so is your dad still with us? Is he still around? He is, yeah. That's awesome. Does he work uh, there part time, or is he kind of? Yeah, so he most of his day he's out doing service work. He does uh, plumbing and heating and electrical. Oh, that's um, cool. Okay. Installs and stuff. So really, really anything people can ask for, he can do. Right, right. So he's kind so. of the shop serviceman. Uh, yeah, for the most part, we sell a lot of hot water tanks through the store that he installs and um, water purification systems. Sure. Oh, that's so. good, actually. So, and you guys do. So, as far as product selection, too, I mean, that's something that people would need to know. You guys have a huge, like, I don't think, I think we've kind of been, if you don't go to True Value, like my family shops at True Values, that's basically, we, we don't go to Home Depot, we don't go to Lowe's, and you'll never see a Home Depot or a Lowe's on my show. Uh, and, but, because I love that. We had a Hector's up at the corner. I think this is how this started, to tell you the gods of truth. Uh, first of all, we were a small family business, so we uh, obviously frequented other small family businesses, but we had a Hector's up at the corner here. Yep. And uh, so that's where we went. That's that was our shop. You know what I mean. So and everybody got to know you. They just I don't know. It was a, it was a decent place. And then when they moved uh, up to Transit, the next nearest one was the True Value up here. And uh, so that's where we go. And uh, but I think a lot of people don't realize like how much product you guys actually have. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Always... A lot of a lot of times people come in and they're just just amazed at 
all of the, the different things that we have. Yeah, here, and you so. know what I found too? There's certain product selections that you guys have that you guys have in stock that even the big boxes won't have. You right. know what I mean? And uh, that's something that people need to be mindful of too. Um, so if I'm doing like a small home project, a lot of times you'll have it where if I walk into a big box because I can't get into a true value, first of all, nobody's there to help you. Everybody's wandering around. There's three people on the floor and I can't find the product. And when I do find the product, it's not in stock. <laughs> so, right. uh, and every single time I go to a true value, it's always in stock and everybody's like super helpful. They don't kind of like, they're, you know, people aren't on top of you and they don't ignore you. So it's a really good balance. Um, but the, yeah, the product selection is good. So you guys carry, uh, you know, like big, large hardware like that, like the, uh, the water tanks and the air, or the water purification systems um do you guys do installs on cabinetry or anything like that or uh no we don't really do any cabinetry um it's more of the the uh, mechanical side of things gotcha so like hardware so, plumbing right yeah that type of thing so and is it can somebody call and have your dad uh do work or is it based on the products that you purchased from you guys like are you guys hiring nope. out yeah he does um, probably more than three quarters of his work is just call and stuff. And, and that would be just a service yeah. call then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great though, and that's really good for business too, right? I mean, because obviously, you can get it anytime you get a client like that, they're gonna more than likely come back. So. Yep. That's awesome. So, is your dad working by himself? It's. He is. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I after I graduated college, I was with him for maybe about 18 months, but then I ended up back in the store. Here, yeah, sure, so. sure. Well, somebody's got to run the shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is your mom still around? Is she with us? She is, yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. She's still, Good. she's still helping out in the office and doing all that. So you still have your original people there then, pretty much. And yeah. Your grandparents. Yeah, my grandparents are both actually still alive. Holy too, cow. So. <laughs> well, good for you, man. That's great. So <laughs> did they, does your grandpa kind of come in and kick the tires every once in a while? or? Uh, not not so much anymore, yeah. Um, but yeah, he he was for quite a few years. Right. Um, so, did you grow up in Springville? Is that? I you, did. Yes. You did. So that's pretty cool that you own the business there then, and because uh, your family is probably super integrated into the town, right? Yep. That, and that really helps your your business too. Plus, your location's fantastic. You guys are like smack dab in the middle of the village there. Yeah. Um, and it was at the original location of the place too. When it was. Uh, when it first started, it was actually across the street um, in the old Ritter Davis building. Right. Um, and they were over in this location. So I at see. some point, they swapped. I've never really heard the story why. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, it's it's been here since probably the 50s or 60s, I wow. guess. That's great, man. Honestly, in Springville, like I think I told you when I met you, you know, I hadn't been there. My brother-in-law moved there uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, I just hadn't been there. And I went to Boston, and I made my way down to Springville, and I, honestly, I was floored by how awesome the town was. I just, it was just, a, and I'm sure this is, you know, why I'm doing this show because a lot of people, you know, the name, but you don't know the town. Right. You know, and uh, there's so much happening there. And I know, so you guys have had that business since the 80s. So you guys saw, um, you know, Buffalo and all the peripheral towns were really in rough shape uh, during the 80s. And I, everything kind of was peaking out back in the 90s and they hit another dip. Uh, and then things were coming back up and now we've hit another dip. So you guys have seen a lot of, um, you know, turmoil really uh, economically. But when I walked into Springville, when I walked down the street, I was like, this is really a beautiful town and people have a lot of pride there and there's a lot of great businesses there now. All the shop owners have this sense of, you know, uh, togetherness. There's a, a unity that I don't see in a lot of towns. Yep. Uh, and everybody's working towards like a common goal and it really shows man uh so you know good for you guys for sticking it out you guys everybody said i told you i went down to the cafe and two of the girls were like you gotta go to the hardware store you gotta go to the hardware store you gotta <laughs> talk to luke and i went into another shop and they said the same thing and then um liesel at lulu said the same thing <laughs> so yep. i was like all right i'll go to the hardware store uh, but, but it makes perfect sense you guys were a fixture there for a long time and have weathered all those storms and you know it's you've been a fixture and without you guys you know and i'm sure there's probably a good maybe six or seven other businesses that towed the line through those years you know without you you don't know right 
you, you right. really don't know because you guys were holding essentially, you know, a good probably dozen of you were holding down the fort when, when times were tough. Um, so, you know, that's really great that you guys managed to do that. And plus growing up there though. And it, now did your dad uh, grow up there too? And your grandpa, are, are you guys all from Springville? Uh, my dad grew up in Colden. Okay, well, not too far away, though. Yeah, so not too far away. He went to uh, Springville Schools. Okay, yeah, that's where my sister um, lived, actually, in Colden there. So yeah. what do you guys like, uh, about 15 from Colden? Not even, 20? Yeah, 15 or 20. Yeah, because yeah, like my nieces went to school. Uh, the Colden kids go to school in Springville, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, Springville is one of those hub towns, kind of like East Aurora is, in a way. You know what I mean? It's a lot of commerce there. Uh, and I think that's that area outside of town where they've got more of the commercial district. Uh, that was a really smart move too, but any one of these hub towns kind of always has that, you know? Um, so, and did you guys fight for that? Uh, do you know this, the, any, I haven't talked to anybody from Springville. I have uh, a couple of people that I'm going to talk to on the Springville podcast about this, but do you know, like, did you guys fight for that village to maintain its independence as far as small businesses and not let any chains in? Cause I mean, you guys can't really, true value is not a chain, if you know what I mean. It's not in the true right. sense of the word. So. Yeah. I, I don't think it's ever gotten quite as heated as places like East Aurora. Sure. Where they've, they've really strived to keep the, I mean, we have a historic district here in town. Right. Um, so we probably wouldn't ever see a big box come right into the downtown sector. Sure. Sure. Um, but I know in places like that, they've, you know, they've thrown lawsuits around. So yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Think, I don't think it's ever been that bad here. No, it, well, we had our uh, business in East Aurora when they were doing the Walmart there, and they just pretty much threw them out on their ear. Uh, right. Just because. And, you know, granted, they built it right on the border, <laughs> uh, and then they moved. So, you know, they moved even further out because uh, they were on that Five Corners area there near McKinley Mall uh, for a while um, after right. that. But I thought, you know, you can't fight progress to a degree. But by making uh, that that area historic district, that really protected you guys. And then it still was smart to have those businesses up there. You know what I mean? Because you're going to mm -hmm. get the tax money and you're going to get the draw. But it's really hard for a lot of people to resist. If you come into Springville, it's hard to resist getting out of the car and walking around. You know? Right. And that just encourages people to shop. And one of the cool things I saw in your store is you guys had um, – uh, you know, because people think, oh, it's, you know, it's a hardware store. So if my door breaks, <laughs> you know, I can go and get a part. But you guys have everyday products there, too. You know, mm -hmm. you guys have a lot of stuff that people can walk in. You had all when I was there, you had all the summer stuff out, um, which a lot of people don't probably realize that you have all these like cool summer sports games, uh, you know, the, the balls and uh, the, I think you yep. had jarts there and volleyball and stuff like that. And then uh, you had the mason jars or those bell jars. Uh, mm -hmm. all out which are really popular and all the gardening stuff so when you live in the town you couldn't have a more convenient location to go get your gardening supplies some summer games you know some just everyday items so i don't i don't think a lot of people really you know you think of true value you think of hardware right you think of paint but right. i think a lot of people are thinking about you know something more simple and uh, practical on a day-to-day -day basis so uh, is that something that they just started or have you guys been carrying that stuff for a long time? No, they've always had a pretty diverse catalog. Um, they try really hard to, um, have, you know, a wide array of things that maybe even some of the bigger boxes don't have. Right. Right. Well, and that's pretty cool. So is that how that system works? You guys get, which for supply chain issues, that's awesome. So you really can just order, uh, through their system. Yeah, we do a lot of dropship orders where we can just call the, the whatever company it is we're looking at, and True Value has accounts set up with them, so they we can just order you know something that may not even be in the True Value catalog and stock it in the store. Oh, that's cool. So you can really like customize your store then to your town, right? Yeah. So you're not forced. To, yeah, because I used to run uh, some retail chains, and you know certain stores they would just force us product and you're like man you know this isn't going to sell the second you get it in <laughs> right and then you're the one that's going to take the hit on it because it's going to come off your bottom line with something right. like that and you would fight with your regionals because you're like look can you stop sending this there's you know you can ship it over to lowell they'll sell tons of these and we're not selling any of them so get it over to lowell and they're like i'm sorry my hands are tied with this there's nothing i can do about it but then it hurts your bottom line in your store so if they allow you that type of autonomy that's pretty cool you know 
So. Yeah, and a, a lot of times we'll we'll utilize that during um, with seasonal stuff, you know, like sleds or whatever. If all the warehouses are back ordered from True Value, we can call the company and get shipments of tubes and sleds and things like that. So see, and that that's like pretty well. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. like the ideal situation, right? If you're going to have a business that's tied into a national, then you're reaping a ton of the benefits that you would get from something like that with really no downside. And you're mm-hmm. you're getting all that great marketing and that name brand recognition you know, yep. with them too. And there's a lot of trust with True Values. I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I've never really seen anybody like talk about it, but you know, between like the big boxes and then the small ones, you know, True Value just has that thing and they really like pound that into the public's perception, you know, that we're your hometown mm-hmm. store and they really are. And when you go through across the country, anywhere I've been, you know, most towns have like a True Value type of store. And I bet you, uh, it's probably saved how many hardware stores, right? Yeah. You know, uh, how many ge- how many generations have been saved to, through that just because, you know, people are just going to go there because they know the name and you, they put them, even like here in Orchard Park, like they've done a really good job of marketing that one. So, uh, you know, more power to anybody who's doing something like that. And we fought the small business game for 32 years, you know, and so I can understand why you know, it's a good uh, system for you guys. Mm-hmm. So, so what type of services do you guys offer? Let's like discuss that real fast. Like, yeah, so I mean, we do quite a bit. We have uh, glass and plexiglass in stock that we can cut to custom sizes. We do uh, window repair and fabrication, screen repair and fabrication, um, lamp repair. We can do lock rekeying, pipe cutting and threading. Um, and so can I bring, like, if I have a lamp that needs repairing, like you guys, will you guys, what, if it's a big, like ceiling lamp, will you guys come out and service it or do I have to pull it down and bring it in? Yeah. My dad can service the bigger stuff, um, like table and desk lamps people bring in and we can rewire those or put Mm -hmm. new sockets in them. Um, we have, uh, we partner with a guy out of Jamestown who does the vacuum and sewing machine repair. So he's in once a week and. Oh, that's great. Take stuff and okay. pick stuff up. Um, and we've been using him for a, a lot of years. And right. That brings in some business, too. Sure. Uh, so do are, are, do you guys market a lot of this? Because I didn't know that you guys did all that. I'm just literally finding this out now. And is that unique to your store? Or is that like, all, do all True Values offer this? Or is it just you guys that? I think quite a few of them do some service um I don't know that many of them do as much as we do right. um, just because of how we're, we've been set up. Um, we've got our big shop area set up in our basement, so we're kind of lucky to have that space. Oh, that's cool. Right, so you guys have um, a workshop down there then? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of them don't, right, because a lot of them are just pad shops. You know, they right, just, yeah, a lot of them just have a, a back receiving room. Or, mm-hmm. um, you know, if, if they're like a, a steel dealer or something, they might have a, a workshop for that, but they're not necessarily set up to do a lot of the other stuff. Sure. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't know you guys did all of that. So you guys do screen. Uh, obviously, you do the plumbing, you'll do installs, lighting, uh, windows, which is a really big one, too, because uh, instead of a call on a glass guy, they can call you guys. Yep. And come out and do it. So do you do pretty much anything then? It doesn't from large plate all the way down to small windows or Yeah, we have quite a few sizes of single strength in stock and we have access to suppliers up in the city that can get us bigger, you know, like double pane storm windows or vacuum okay. sealed ones. So Well, after so many years too, your network's gotta be pretty deep at this point, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you guys can pretty much call anybody. See, I, so I'm learning this. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. I didn't know that you guys did that. I didn't even know any <laughs> hardware store did that, to tell you the truth. I thought they were just pretty much straight up retail. Uh, yep. uh, but the fact that you can do that in that town, too, that's also super valuable as well because people like dealing with somebody that's local. 
you're right there. You've been there for 40 years now. So it's a matter of just the trust that the public has with you. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys get a ton of referrals as soon as somebody does like, you know, and that's probably how you get your business right through the services. A lot of times I'm sure somebody gets their screen fixed and you're like, Hey, did you know, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. you know, uh, my dad has never advertised his repair business and he's, constantly busier than he can handle oh, so I'm sure. that's it's all just word of mouth stuff sure well he's super diverse too that's a lot of skill sets to right be able to know how to do that he's like uh, what's uh, the guy on uh i watch i'm a fanatic for this old house uh the older guy uh <laughs> you know what i'm talking about he knows everything there's like every, yeah. he's always getting consulted your dad's probably like that right there's yep. not much that he hasn't seen or hasn't done so that's and now how about so you now the service calls are standard uh for the weekday does he do after hours calls at this point or if it's an emergency uh, not not too much emergencies yeah. he'll go out um but he he tries to keep it to the, the sure. eight to five as best he can so okay. that's awesome so yeah. is did you is that pretty much everything that you do as far as the service calls or is there anything else no that's pretty much it yeah that's a lot, actually. And if he needs somebody else, does he grab somebody from the shop? <laughs> he just yeah. pulls it on the job. Yeah. Yeah. If he's if he needs to pull a deep well or something, he'll usually grab one of us. Sure, sure. Well, that's awesome. So. <laughs> well, good for you guys, man. I had no idea. So your grandpa was the same way then, right? I mean, just the same mindset, like pretty much. It's yeah. Probably where your dad got it, and that's where you get it from, and. So. Uh, do you have any kids? I do. I have two boys. Oh, there you go. Four, so. <laughs> There's a fourth generation, right? <laughs> They're actually hanging out down here right now. So. Yeah. See? They're doing the same thing that you were doing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> so that's great. And so for Springville, for your business, like, so do you see, since you're, you're kind of in the goldfish bowl there and you're right in the center of town, do you see the um, – uh, the town like growing and do you see the direction that it's headed in now or is it hard for you just because you're so inside it no there's been a, a pretty good push from a lot of the local business owners in the past probably five or ten years to really start revitalizing the downtown mm-hmm. um there's always been you know a pretty good diversity of businesses but we've had a lot of empty storefronts through the years so um my generation some of the the kids i went to high school with they're starting to buy up some of these empty buildings now and they're fixing them up and making them real nice again so it's been really nice to see that you know that i'm not alone um in trying to sure keep keep things going down here that there's still interest um because you know a lot of our customer base is more of my dad's generation right right um so we're trying to to figure out how we can market better to my generation to get them shopping here instead of going online or going to the big box stores sure well Um, it well first of all i think our home ownership and i don't know the stats i just read a story about this a couple weeks ago that uh so you're are you in your you would be so if you're 86 you're like 38 or so right so i'll be 35 this year so uh so that your generation so i'm 20 years older pretty much in your generation i guess people are saying that you know i mean for all of us this isn't just you know you uh, and i this is everybody at this point basically under 60 and we're having trouble buying homes right so right. home ownership could also be part of this as well where unless you get your house inherited or you you know you make a good buck uh, it's difficult for us to find uh, homes and uh, even though springville has been more affordable uh the prices are going up all over the place and now springville is turning into a hot market because it's awesome right and right. It, it always was but now i think you're really seeing i think the potential of uh springville and you could attest to this i've only been there six times but it <laughs> seems like it's really like you can just feel it when you're there you know what i mean like it's like on this really big like upswing um yeah and you know, what do you attribute uh, the people of your generation coming into the town uh, and buying up these shops? Like, what's their mindset? 
Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, sure. Well, like guy what, just interrupted. <laughs> uh, that's all right, dude. So, like, what, you know, because you had said that people of your generation are coming into the town and they're buying up those or, you know, opening up these businesses, which I think is awesome. Um, and that's something that, honestly, the older generation should really look at and say, you know, this is, because I see this all across the region right now, where people from their 20s into their 40s are reinvesting in their communities. Do you, yep. what is that, though? I mean, what's that mindset? Where do you think that comes from? I don't know. I think it's just a, a pride in the hometown. I know that's what it is for me, having grown up here. And, you know, I was here all but the years I was in college. Right. Um, just that, that small town feel that you come home and everybody asks you how you've been, how you've been doing, what you've sure. been up to. Um, you it just, just kind of sticks with you. Right. And they just want to so. be there, essentially, yep. is what you're saying. Well, dude, honestly, you know, your town. So uh, what I loved about uh, the first couple of days that I was in Springville was first and foremost to see the historic district was such a surprise. And it's so beautiful down there. And you've got the murals and you've got all these great businesses going in. And all yep. the shop owners are super positive, And everybody's like, I, it's the, one of the only towns I've ever been in where a shop owner will recommend other stores before you even really got to talk to them. <laughs> you know, and uh, that is, you know, uh, literally, I found my clients through recommendations just through people saying, oh, you got to go see so and so you got to go see so and so. And then right. once I got off the main street, uh, and then I, I had no idea that that beautiful square with the gazebo and the veterans memorials there, uh, yep. the skate park and that other park with the gazebo. And you've got an awesome library, like right off the town square, uh, that stuff. And then the history museum down the shop near the ice cream stand, uh, mm -hmm. that whole town, the way it's laid out and the way it's set up, uh, is really cool. And how it kind of like, if you've never been there before, how it unfolds while you're walking, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a really special place, man. And it, the layout was fantastic. Like, thank God you guys didn't uh, over, you know, a lot of times when towns go through rough periods, they make poor decisions because they need the money. So, mm -hmm. you know, somebody will come in and a developer will come in with a great idea, but really doesn't have the heart for a project and they'll throw money at the town. The town will take it. The project sits undeveloped and falls through. And then the town's left with an eyesore, right? Um, but that didn't seem to really happen there. It seems like whatever you know, uh, nuances played themselves out over the last 30 years, really worked in your favor. And uh, the towns, it's really beautiful, uh, honestly. And uh, what they're doing at the art center now with that church, um, they've expanded that, correct? Yep. Yeah, their work, they started a lot of work on that this summer. Yeah. So. And when did the skate park go in? Uh, that just got installed last fall. They had a, a wooden one. Um, before that set up and they got some funding through the Tony Hawk Foundation and some other grants. Oh, no kidding. So they've been fundraising for that for quite a few years and they finally were able to, to pull the trigger on it last fall. So. But so, but the town's cool though. If you, you know what I mean? Like it's not just yeah. like, a, cause the thing that I'm, the myth that I'm trying to dispel with this show uh, you know, one of my top three agendas is to show how cool these small towns are because a lot of people have the complete wrong idea, honestly, about small town life, small town living, and people that live there. I mean, I grew up in a small town. Uh, it's just a really cool place that's looking forward and holding yep. and doing the right things with its past. You know, it's not forgetting where it was from and it's improving what's there, but it's also looking towards the future without forgetting its past. And that's a really hard thing to a lot of times to do. And Springville's done it really well. So, yeah. You know, I mean, you, that theater alone, dude, I love <laughs> those old theaters like that. Uh, so you have like this, you know, you have a theater, you've got the breweries, you've got the coffee shops, you got you at the hardware store, you got a meat market, you've got cool gift stores, uh, the skate park, a beautiful town park, and then the art center. And it's like within three blocks <laughs> you know? right so that's a really powerful statement for a lot of people now and i think uh maybe just from my take being 20 years older maybe the 30 somethings you know are you everybody's kind of seeing the writing on the wall now with big box and the environment and a lot of crazy stuff that's going on you know and they're like mm -hmm. i just want to be in my place and i want to contribute and that's how you make a difference right yeah. You know, like it, sure. invest in yourself, invest in your town and things happen that way. So 
and you guys have done a great job. And like I said, I think everybody told me to go there because you guys are such a foundation uh, and a staple in that village that you just couldn't have a show without you guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure your dad and your grandpa and pretty much know everybody in town. So. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, is there anything you want to add that we didn't cover? Because uh, we should talk, I, I, I mean, can't... you did your services, right? We talked yep. about that. And then pro what about products? Is there any products you want to talk about? I'll edit all this. So. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, we could just touch on our, our paint real quick. Okay. Um, we're just about to switch from products over to the true value line of paint. Okay. Oops, I, lost, um, so, I lost you there. Let's do that again. What was that? We're going to switch our paint line over to the true value line of paint. Okay. Um, so that we're going to do a, a big relaunch well, on that be... coming up here in the next month or so. So hopefully that'll drive in some more business for us. Sure. Are you guys seeing um, a lot of uh, true value products now? Like, like self-branded, you know, in-store, like self-brand true value. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they have their own line of like plumbing supplies and electrical supplies and painting supplies. Um, it's like, it's called master plumber, master electrician, master okay. painting. You, you know, but um, honestly, that's smart business because a lot of companies do that. And those products are made by the same companies that are branding yeah. the large thing. You're just getting them at a better price. Yep. So why not, right? Yeah, they're a little bit cheaper, um, but just because they have the the branding on them, they're sure they're not quite as expensive. Yeah, so. yeah, same quality, right? Yep. So, awesome. So the paint, it's going to be is it the exact? So basically, you're changing out. It's going to be the same, uh, you know, color, same type of styles and, and collections, but it's just going to be with a true value brand. Right. That's good. So you're not going to, like, if somebody's got a favorite paint or a paint color or a paint style, you'll still have that. It, yeah, just... we'll, we'll still be able to custom mix colors like we can do now. Uh -huh. um, they just bring in a, a small sample and we can scan it and get the formula for it. Okay, awesome. Okay. Any so, other uh, products you want to talk about? Uh, no, I, I guess not. We'll... We'll leave it with the paint for right now. Okay, that's good, dude. And that was a good half hour or two, and that was good. We talked about the town. We talked about your business, your history, uh, Springville. Anything else you want to add about Springville, or no? We covered all that. It's a great place to live. Um, they've got, you know, a, a strong core of business owners that are really committed to making this downtown thrive again, like it was, you know, many years ago. Um, and I would recommend it to anyone. Well, that's about it for this episode of the Small Town Western New York Companion Podcast. Thanks for listening, and remember to support the small towns of Western New York in any way you can. They're full of great businesses and people who would love to see you in their towns. The Small Town Western New York Companion Podcast, the TV series, is a presentation of Discovering Western New York and AA Augustine Media Co. and can be found everywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening.